This is the day that the Lord has made. Welcome to worship on our third Sunday in Advent. <clears throat> we'll be worshiping out of Divine Service Setting 4, found in the hymnal on page 203. If you'd like to mark Psalm 85 in the front portion of your hymnal, we will be saying that for our psalm. The sermon theme for this morning is Rejoice, out of Luke chapter 7 from Pastor Gless. Let's rise and greet one another in the name of the Lord. Please be seated for our opening hymn. Please rise. In remembrance of your baptism, I invite you to make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? But you, there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, 
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We sing our psalm. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday in Advent is from Zephaniah chapter 3. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, 
a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt, you, exalt over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will ch change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, at that time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be made known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. In honor of the Holy Gospel, I invite you to please rise for our hallelujah and verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed sight, and he answered them. Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the poor are raised, or the dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began speaking to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord, or this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Having heard this word of God, we confess our common faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible.
Please be seated. At this time, I'll come down the aisles and collect the prayer cards. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Rejoice! Over the Thanksgiving holiday, there was so much to rejoice about. The Lions lost once again, which meant we hadn't lost our draft pick. Of course, we almost did with last week's game, but we won't talk about that too much. The Mary Lutheran Crusaders won the state championship, and even though I could not be there in person, I am sure that my shouts from my parents' living room could be heard in U.S. Bank Stadium all the way from Michigan. And then those shouts only continued when my Michigan Wolverines finally, and I do mean finally, and I mean finally, <laughs> beat that team from down south, in which we don't even mention their name in my household. But for those that don't follow sports, Michigan beat Ohio State after losing to them 15 out of the last 16 times. Rejoice! Oh yes, I was rejoicing. Rejoice. Last week our gospel reading brought us to that camel skin laden prophet who was munching on locusts and wild honey and out preaching a message of repentance and baptizing those with a baptism of repentance. And even though it was not a time of rejoicing for religious leaders, the people gathered nonetheless to rejoice in repenting of their sins, rejoice in being baptized with a baptism of repentance as they were all pointed to the one who would baptize them with Holy Spirit and with fire. Rejoice. For the past two weeks, we have been surrounded by blue pyramids that point us to the anticipation of the coming of Christ. Blue is that color for hope. And we also have lit those blue candles there. Well, to, today we make a shift and we light a pink candle. But why do we light a pink candle up here? Well, today is Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete Sunday is the Latin word for rejoice. We rejoice on this Sunday because in anticipation of the coming of Christ, the Lord is near. Rejoice, the Lord is near. Our epistle lesson even emphasized this as Pastor Andrew was reading it there. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Our Old Testament reading that he also read emphasized this, and it said rejoice and exult with all our hearts. 
And even God rejoices over us with gladness and quiets us by His love. Rejoice. A lot to rejoice about. But our Gospel reading does not appear to be a time for rejoicing. John the Baptist, who had just been preaching to the masses by the river Jordan, was now in prison. And likely his sentence would be death. And so when he asked his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? Those words were likely spoken out of desperation, out of despair, out of discouragement as John looked around him and all he could see were bars and prison walls. In fact, back in chapter 4 of this same book, Jesus had even proclaimed that liberty would come to the captives. And here is John, he's a captive, and yet no liberty has come his way as the dark, discouraging reality of a prison cell surrounds him. Just think about John's condition here as we celebrate Gaudete Sunday, this Sunday for rejoicing. Because the question that is no doubt in the back of his mind is, is that what is there to rejoice about? What is there to rejoice about? We might come here today with that same thought upon our heart and mind today. What is there to rejoice about? Because even though we don't find ourselves in a prison cell here, we are not immune to discouragement, despair, and the depressing realities of this world. There are likely those here that are facing the forthcoming Christmas and knowing that there's going to be an empty seat because someone they love is no longer alive. There are likely those here that are going to face an empty seat at their table because of the reality of a grudge that has worked its way into the family. There are likely those here today who are seeking gainful employment or, quite frankly, are not employed and so are worrying about the fact of can they provide for their household. There are likely those here that are faced with a new diagnosis, maybe an ongoing diagnosis, and that fear of the unknown continues to be present. There are likely those here that are just simply overwhelmed by life. Where it seems like every single turn brings about more discouragement and more despair. When the burdens of life mount up all around us, we find ourselves wondering what is there to rejoice about. So let's take a look at how John handled this situation. He asked the question through his disciples to Jesus, are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? John wanted to know from his prison cell if all of his work had been in vain or not. He wanted to know if the person that he had been called by God to point to as the promised Messiah was in fact the promised Messiah. He wanted to know if there was yet hope in this world for him as he looked at those bars around him. He wanted to know if there was hope as he faced his forthcoming fate. He wanted to know if everything was going to be okay. Even if he was in prison. Even if he would die. Because none of that would matter anymore if he just knew that his Messiah was here. Just listen to what Jesus tells those disciples of John to tell John in prison. Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. 
Jesus takes John to the miracles that he has performed. He points to him that everything that had been promised in the Old Testament was now fulfilled in none other than Jesus. He told him basically, John, you can rest easy in that prison cell because now the kingdom of God has drawn near in the person of Jesus Christ. You know, we pray this same thing every single Sunday. We pray, Thy kingdom come. What does this mean? The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer, but we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. How does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. So there's no need to be discouraged. The kingdom of God has drawn near. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, is here. Now is the time to rejoice. And the same is true for us. We rejoice on Gaudete Sunday. Our God is drawn near to us in the person of His Son. And where does He locate Himself? Look no further than His Word. Look no further than His sacrament. But where are you looking for reasons to rejoice? Are you looking for things to go your way? Are you looking for that reason to rejoice? Maybe it's that bill to be paid, or that problem to be solved, or that conflict to cease, or the wicked ways of the world to be over and done with. If you are looking to this world in any way for a reason to rejoice, then you are looking in the wrong direction. What Jesus reveals as He responds to John's disciples and ultimately to John is that no matter the circumstances, prison or otherwise, if you want a reason to rejoice, then look to Jesus. Look to where Jesus locates Himself for you. Because that's where He draws near to you today. And that is all we need. I especially think about this every single time that I minister to someone who is in the last hours or the last days of their lives. When that moment happens, it seems like all of the things that once mattered in life no longer matter at all, and they're pushed aside. Now the only thing that matters is the only thing that ever really mattered. It's Jesus. Look to Jesus, and you will always have a reason to rejoice. Why do you think John could later rejoice? Or why do you think St. Paul from prison, as he wrote the words, Rejoice in the Lord always, could rejoice? Why do you think those who were persecuted for their faith after Jesus had ascended into heaven and they went away rejoicing, why were they able to rejoice? Why do you think Martin Luther could rejoice as the Roman Catholic Church was attacking him? Why do you think someone like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was imprisoned by the Nazis, could still rejoice? Why could everybody in these situations rejoice? It's because they weren't looking to the ways of this world, or they weren't looking to the world to somehow give them a reason to rejoice. They looked no further than Jesus. In the book of Hebrews, it says to fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despised its shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This is our reason for rejoicing. Jesus has won the victory. The wrath of God against sin has been consumed in the body of Jesus on the cross. 
all of our failures, all of our sins, all those things that we have done, all those things that we should have done, every last ounce of God's wrath against sin that should have been ours to endure has been quenched in the body of Jesus Christ. Ever since the Garden of Eden, He has been promising that this would happen. And it has, in fact, happened. It is finished. It is done. Jesus fulfilled His promise all for you. So rejoice. Because that's why John could now rejoice. The promises of the foretold Messiah had been fulfilled. He could rest easy. He could breathe. A sigh of relief. His work wasn't in vain. His life was no longer forfeit. Even though he would die a martyr's death, he could know that was not the end of the story. Not for him, and not for you. Rejoice. Your salvation is secure. There is a day yet coming when the Son of Man will ride upon the clouds and He will come and He will save both you and me for all eternity. Rejoice. And you know what? In the meantime, He still gives us reasons to rejoice. And I'd like to share just a few here at Zion. Reasons to rejoice. You know, here in this little town of Mayer, I moved in back in 2007. The sign said 554, and I freaked out. I never knew there was a town that small. And yet, here in this town of Mayer, God has allowed for this congregation to continue to grow. Our school, three out of four years, has experienced record enrollment. Did you know that the reason that we're considering a building opportunity is because in the last three years, we have turned away 68 students who could have been hearing about Christ on a day-in and day-out basis. We are growing. Our congregation is growing. Our Sunday school is seeing numbers that it hasn't seen in years. There are people here who are giving and giving of their time and talents as a family of faith so that we may further share hope and teach Christ. We have had numerous confirmations, adult and youth, numerous baptisms, and guess what? There are more to come. We have five baptisms scheduled on the fourth week in January. Five. There are a lot of reasons to rejoice, people. So let's thank God for it. And all the while, we can rejoice because no matter the circumstance, discouragement, despair, or otherwise. We know the end of the story. And that means there's always a reason to rejoice. Because guess what? Jesus wins. We know what's going to happen. All He does is win. And He has named and claimed us as His own. We belong to Jesus. And so we can join with the Apostle Paul who says, even from prison, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I will say, rejoice. In Jesus' name, Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you rescued the daughter of Zion from her enemies and take away the judgments against her. Look with compassion upon your people wherever they suffer for the name of Jesus. Give them wisdom when they are pressured to compromise. Provide when they suffer loss. Give courage when they are afraid. 
and strengthen them in the midst of persecution until you deliver them. Preserve them always in the joyful hope that you will restore all that is lost with what cannot be taken away. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, as you once sent messengers before the face of Jesus to prepare his way, so strengthen all and encourage all pastors and church workers as they make known his saving name. We pray for the pastoral team here at Zion, for missionary Pastor James May, for vicars Peter and Peters and Cranky, for seminarian Mark Esser. Open the ears of all who hear your word to rejoice, repent, and firmly believe. Lord, in your mercy. Giver of all good gifts, look upon the households of your people. Provide companionship for those who are alone. Strengthen, strengthen the bonds of marriage and equip parents to raise their children in love and faith. Grant that our homes may be places of joy, reasonableness, peace, and prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, our times are in your hands. Look, on favor, look with favor on Edna Ernst as she celebrates her birthday tomorrow, her 98th birthday. Grant that she may continue to grow in wisdom and strength er, and grace. Strengthen her trust in your goodness and bless her with your abiding love all the days of her life. Through G- Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for another year of married life together for Jerry and Marlis Thomas. Open their hearts always to receive more of your love, that their love for each other may never grow weary, but deepen and grow through every joy and sorrow shared. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you set the prisoners free. Remember those who are incarcerated justly and grant that they might repent, be freed from the clutches of sin accept the consequences of their wrongdoing, and learn to live honestly and peacefully. Remember all those who are imprisoned unjustly. Restore their freedom according to your will, and preserve them in your grace and the confidence that you know what is true and just. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son became flesh and healed the sick of all kinds of diseases and afflictions, demonstrating his power and giving us a foretaste of the resurrection on the last day. Have mercy upon Mary Ellen Clatt and give her healing from this horse-related incident. Be with Vicki Prowalski, mother of Christina Grossinger, who has been diagnosed with cancer. With Gary Deckman, brother of Gail Guthland, who has been diagnosed with cancer. Be with Leon Frankie and his back surgery this coming Tuesday. Continue to be, be with Charlene Hall, grandmother of Pastor Gless, who has entered hospice care. Be with Doug Lentz who fell this past week and is in the hospital. We also give you thank, thanks for the successful surgery of Al Eggers and Brian Rademacher. Heal them in your time and according to your will, and preserve them in the confidence that your, you will deliver your people from all afflictions at the resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, the Son of Man came eating and drinking with sinners that he might proclaim the kingdom and welcome them in by the forgiveness of sins. As he hosts his supper this day for repentant people, grant that those who partake his body and blood to be worthy and well prepared, firmly believing in the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we go before the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. I invite you to fill out a fellowship pad found in the inside aisle of your pew. Remember, one name per line. The date is December 12th. That's December 12th. We worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
St. Paul writes in his first letter to the Corinthians, Whoever therefore eats, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. <clears throat> Therefore, taking to heart the word of the Lord, if you have not been instructed in the Lutheran faith or you doubt the presence of the Lord in this meal, it is out of love for you that we would invite you to refrain from receiving the Lord's Supper and speak to a pastor after the service if you have any questions. If you'd like to come forward and receive a blessing, simply fold your arms so that across your chest so that we know to do so. We continue with the service of the sacrament. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name, sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord, truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your boundless mercy, you sent your servant John the Baptist to proclaim that Christ, the King, in Christ, that the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts, we pray, Come, Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood, given us to eat and drink, We receive the forgiveness of sins, and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. Now may this true body and this true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul to life everlasting. Depart with his peace and his joy. Your sins are forgiven. We sing the Nunc Dimittis. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Please be seated. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord. Just a few brief announcements this morning. Uh, Sunday, December 26th, regarding this, we've got a few services that weekend with Christmas Eve. There will be three services on Christmas Eve, December 24th. One service on Christmas Day, that is Saturday, December 25th. And so we've made a decision that we'll have only one service with communion on Sunday, December 26th at 9 a.m. There will be no Bible class and Sunday school that day. So again, Sunday, December 26th, one service, 9 a.m., and we'll continue to announce this as the Sundays progress. Upcoming services. The Sunday school Christmas service will be here at church later this afternoon, 4 p.m., There'll be a meal to follow in the church basement. Looking forward to that. Wednesday, December 15th, uh, midweek Advent service will be a choral service this Wednesday, starting at 7 p.m. with the Advent Supper supporting the Senior High Youth Group in their trip to uh, National Youth Gathering this summer. That, will, that meal will start at 5.15. Now finally, last week, uh, the voters decided to Con contract with Station 19 Architects. There will be more details to follow in future weeks to come. Go in peace, serve the Lord.